The fact that the attacks were apparently premeditated, as alleged by the House managers, demonstrates the ludicrousness of the incitement allegation against the president. You can't incite what was already going to happen. Our coverage of the impeachment trial continuing now. Joining us is David Weinstein, former assistant U.S. attorney, and David is now with the Hinshaw Law Firm. So, David, let's break down what the Trump defense team's basic argument was today. Essentially, it was a First Amendment argument, wasn't it? Well, that's part of what they argued today, or they tried to argue that today, that he was just exercising his right to free speech and to talk to his supporters. But it really doesn't go to the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is not just what he said on the 6th, but who he was, when he said it. And he said a lot of this leading up to the 6th. He said a lot of things in October and November and December. So they're trying to focus on the 6th. They're trying to focus on the few words he said on the 6th. But that's sort of moving the bullseye. That's not really what this is all about. Trump's team decided not to take up the entirety of their time, barely a fraction of it. It's about two and a half hours of the 16 hours allotted. What's your overall assessment of how uh, Trump's defense team did today? Look, sometimes less is more and it's better. They did better today than they did a couple of days ago, but they're out of their element. This is not a trial. These are trial lawyers. This is a proceeding in front of the Senate. And so things that usually work in a courtroom, they're not gonna work here. And some of the things that they tried to do really backfired on them and drew more attention to the points that the House prosecutors were trying to make. David, we have not seen any witnesses called yet. Is it still possible or probable that we will? And will it matter if they are called? Well, Jim, there's really only one witness everybody wants to hear from, and he's been invited to speak, and he's decided not to show up. They'd have to debate whether or not they're going to call witnesses, and that'll take some more time to decide if they're going to call them. But the person that everybody wants to hear from and the person that those people who are perhaps on the fence want to hear from is the president. What his intent was, what was on his mind when he said those words, that's the one question everybody wants asked and answered. And David, one of the major things that stood out today, the repetitive, highly edited videos presented by the former president's defense team, as well as reports that Trump's lawyers conferred with Republican senators who are effectively jurors here. who They're supposed to remain objective in this process. So how does that play into the court of public opinion? It plays poorly into the court of public opinion. I think what everybody has to understand here is that they're not really jurors, as you and I would think about them, Lauren. They are the court that's deciding what takes place here. So in a regular trial, if I looked at a juror and talked to them during the course of the trial, that's a mistrial. I'd get reported to the bar for that. That's clearly a violation, but not so much here. One of the rules is not the same here as it is in a regular trial, but the public perception of what's going on is really bad. To have one of the senators who's supposed to be deciding this meeting during the presentation of the evidence, before the presentation, it sets a really bad taste in the mouth of people, and that is really bad for public perception. A lot of things very unique about these proceedings. You're right about that, David. All right, thank you so much, David Weinstein, giving us his perspective on the impeachment trial. David, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You too.